Since the end of last year, a very big superstar has been under attack, and the majority of them coming after him are Britney Spears fans, because they got beef with this guy, Justin Timberlake. Although very entertaining and a very talented man, this guy might be the most irresponsible celebrity you have ever seen. If you take a close look at his history, you may find that he is a very deceptive playboy. Not only that, but one mistake he made 20 years ago gave birth to the largest video sharing platform online that you are watching right now. YouTube. So today, we're gonna take a very close look at why so many people are going after Justin Timberlake. And if you're a fan now, by the time you get to the end of this video, you just might be a hater. So for this video, you're gonna need pao mi hua, some gummy bears, and a definitely refreshing drink to wash down all that anger as you find out all the dirty secrets that will be revealed today. So for our young viewers under 30, let me give you a brief rundown. In the 1990s, before all the Korean boy band sensation, there were only two boy bands who owned the world, the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. These two groups were the absolute obsession of every teenage girl worldwide. Wherever they went, girls would scream in pleasure. <coughs> and these two groups had one thing in common. Both of them had their fair share of playboys. Although today we're gonna focus on NSYNC, trust me, the Backstreet Boys have their fair share of dark history. If you wanna know more about that, leave a comment down below. Justin Timberlake. This guy rose to fame as a kid appearing on the Mickey Mouse Club, and by the time he graduated high school, he had joined NSYNC and become the most prominent member of the entire group. Now, aside from the Backstreet Boys on the male side, on the female side, there were two female pop singers who completely dominated the charts as well. Britney Spears and Janet Jackson. <laughs> and both of them had their fair share of experience and intersect with Justin Timberlake. As most of you know, Britney Spears had a very public relationship with Justin Timberlake, that didn't end well, and then Janet Jackson was actually the one who gave NSYNC their worldwide platform when she invited them to go on tour, and then afterwards she actually collaborated with Justin Timberlake. As you're gonna see, that didn't end well at all. Go on. And if it's one thing you'll learn in this video, is that if you cross paths with Justin Timberlake, your career is destined to go down the toilet. So in the next chapter, we're gonna take a very close look at Justin Timberlake's first victim, who for the past 20 years was completely misunderstood by the world at his hands. Until up about eight months ago when she released a book that revealed the dark and dirty truth behind it all. So as Justin Timberlake's popularity began to rise in America, it would soon shoot into the stratosphere as it would be revealed that he was dating Britney Spears. Although for some weird reason, they denied it for almost two years. Who's dating Britney Spears? <laughs> it's rumored, Is Justin. Is it rumored? It's I have to say I'm dating Tyra Banks. I've heard like a rumor that you and Justin from NSYNC have gone out. I was just wondering if it was true. No, it's not true. Not no. true? No, it's not true. It's not true. I mean, people are gonna start rumors, try. No, it's not true. So last night on TV, I saw you and Justin from NSYNC making out. What? Have you two been Have you two been going out this whole time? Love, Carrie. For real? I don't... Uh-uh. So there's one thing you really need to understand. Britney Spears was absolutely head over heels in love with Justin Timberlake. He was her first love after all, and she wanted to have a family with this guy. I'm not ashamed at all to say that I love him from the bottom of my heart. As far as love is concerned with him, too much is not enough. He's everything. So if this is the case, why in the world would they keep their love a secret for two whole years? Keep watching, you will soon understand that this was most likely Justin's idea to keep that shit quiet. Way back when Britney Spears was filming her movie Crossroads, while she was filming a scene, the director asked her to deliberately look distracted by writing in the notebook. And what did she write? I have the book. All she was writing was Britney and Justin, all these little curlicues. It was like looking at a teenage girl's musings, hearts and butterflies in Justin's name. So this gives you just a little bit of insight of just how infatuated Britney Spears was with Justin Timberlake. But what you're about to hear next will make the picture very clear, that her love for him came with a few major drawbacks. There were a couple of times during our relationship when I knew Justin had cheated on me, especially because I was so infatuated and so in love. I let it go, even though the tabloids seemed determined to rub my face in it. Now it's important to note that this all went down after the relationship was made public. 
public. So now you can begin to understand why Justin Timberlake might have been so adamant not to make the relationship public in the first place. Because once you become involved in the most publicly scrutinized relationship in the world, it makes it really hard to be a fuckboy. Oh my goodness, hello, ew. And after all, what normal girl wants to be at odds with one of the famous pop stars in the world? When NSYNC went to London in 2000, photographers caught him with one of the girls from All Saints in a car. But I never said anything. At the time, we'd only been together for a year. Another time, we were in Vegas, and one of my dancers who'd been hanging out with him told me he'd gestured toward a girl and said, yeah, man, I hit that last night. I don't want to say who he was talking about because she's actually very popular and she's married with kids now. I don't want her to feel bad. God damn, my man had no shame, yo. A girl who's popular now and married with kids? I wonder who that might be. She did it! She did it! She's the one you want! If you think you know who it is, leave a comment down below. And here's something that I think many people who have been in relationships where they were cheated on can understand. When you are deeply in love with someone, you are willing to overlook almost anything. My friend was shocked and believed Justin was only saying it because he was high and felt like bragging. There were rumors about him with various dancers and groupies. I let it all go, but clearly he'd slept around. It was one of those things where you know but you just don't say anything. Okay, so in conclusion, Justin Timberlake is a fuck boy. But unfortunately, in the entertainment industry, it is a very common thing. And after all, they're very young and in what's called puppy love, which you can kind of understand why Britney might have tolerated it. But the next thing Justin did is something that I think very few women could tolerate. But once you hear what it is, it will make you angry in your bones. So like we mentioned in our previous episode about Britney Spears, she didn't exactly have the greatest childhood. Her father was a raging alcoholic who was irresponsible and was also verbally abusive to the family. And despite all of her fame and success, what Britney Spears wanted more than anything in the world was to just get married and have a family. I definitely want to have a family, definitely. I would love to have a family. That would be when I'm the most content. My kids and just, they become your life. It's not all about you anymore. My ultimate goal is just to be a good person, a healthy person. I want to be a young mom. That's my dream. You can judge me however you want, but that's what I want. And after being together for some time, Britney Spears would finally get her wish. She would become pregnant with Justin Timberlake's child. And Justin Timberlake's reaction was not exactly what she expected. Justin definitely wasn't happy about the pregnancy. He said we weren't ready to have a baby in our lives, that we were way too young. I could understand. I mean, I kind of understood. If he didn't want to become a father, I didn't feel like I had much of a choice. I wouldn't want to push him into something he didn't want. Our relationship was too important to me and so I'm sure people will hate me for this but I agreed not to have the baby. You see Justin was willing to hit it raw and not wrap his shit up but he wasn't willing to take responsibility for the consequences of doing so. So when Britney Spears told him that he was going to be a father he was very adamant about her getting rid of it and you need to understand this is 2002 when Bush was president and American legislation was very conservative and America's beloved pop star coming out and saying that she's getting an abortion was not a good look. Abortion was something I never could have imagined choosing for myself but given the circumstances, that is what we did. I don't know if that was the right decision. If it had been left up to me alone, I never would have done it. And yet Justin was so sure that he didn't want to be a father. So under massive pressure from Justin Timberlake, they kept it a secret. Only three people knew of Britney's pregnancy at the time. Their good friend Felicia, Justin Timberlake, and Britney Spears. Now, Britney Spears is from Louisiana, which is a very Southern and religious state. And her family was religious as well. So there was no way in the world they could go to a clinic and risk getting exposed. So they decided to proceed with the abortion at home by taking pills. We also decided on something that in retrospect wound up being, in my view, wrong. And that was that I should not go to a doctor or to a hospital to have the abortion. It was important that no one found out about the pregnancy or the abortion, which meant doing everything at home. We didn't even tell my family. The only person who knew besides Justin and me was Felicia, who was always on hand to help me. I was told it might hurt a little bit, but you'll be fine. On the appointed day with only Felicia and Justin there, I took the little pills. Soon I started having excruciating cramps. I went into the bathroom and stayed there for hours, lying on the floor, sobbing and screaming. They should have numbed me with something. I thought I wanted some kind of anesthesia. I wanted to go to the doctor. I was so scared. I lay there wondering if I was going to die. When I tell you it was painful, I can't begin to describe it. So you would think that someone who claimed to love and care for Britney Spears would see her on the floor crying in agony and pain and not be able to stand it and maybe pick her up, put her in the car and take her to the hospital. Or at least, since you got a lot of money, call some high-flying doctor to come to the house and privately help deal with the matter. At least reduce her suffering, right? The pain was unbelievable. 
I went down to the ground on my knees holding the toilet. For a long time, I couldn't move. To this day, it's one of the most agonizing things I have ever experienced in my life. Still, they didn't take me to the hospital. Justin came into the bathroom and lay on the floor with me. At some point, he thought maybe music would help. So he got his guitar and he lay there with me strumming it. I kept crying and sobbing until it was all over. It took hours and I don't remember how it ended, but I do. 20 years later, remember the pain of it and the fear. Thinking Xiao, your girl is rolling on the floor, suffering in pain, mostly because of you. And rather than trying to do something constructive about it, you pull out your guitar and start playing a song? Like you want this girl to suffer with a soundtrack? You a piece of shit. And this ain't even the worst of it. What's about to follow, unfortunately, is a story that many women have heard before. A guy gets a girl pregnant, forces her to get rid of it, and then he bounces. After that, I was messed up for a while, especially because I still did love Justin so much. It was insane how much I loved him, and for me, it was unfortunate. I should have seen the breakup coming, but I didn't. So now, after forcing this girl to get rid of their baby, he's now dumped this girl and used her pain as fuel for his album. And then on top of that, he would release a song that would make her look bad, like she was the cheater. Now, to be fair, in her book, Britney actually admitted that she did cheat, once. So I did two, not a lot, one time with Wade Robson. We were out one night and we went to a Spanish bar. We danced and danced. I made out with him that night. I was loyal to Justin for years, only had eyes for him with that one exception, which I admitted to him. That night was chalked up to something that will happen when you're as young as we were, and Justin and I moved past it and stayed together. Okay, so the fact of the matter is, nobody is completely clean here. The question is, is who's dirtier? Because Justin knew that Britney couldn't come forward about the abortion, because that would completely tarnish her good girl image. And he used this and proceeded to completely capitalize on their breakup by speaking about it publicly. You know, um, I remember when we decided that we were going to go our separate ways. And I promised to her that I wouldn't say specifically why we broke up. You've been quoted as saying something very bad happened. You can just clear up this. The impression is that Brittany did something very bad that hurt you. She had a relationship with somebody else. Was there an incident? Honestly, I mean, you know, we're not perfect. I don't judge anybody. Um, I think that, uh, it's just a situation of, it's just young love. God damn. Now, in spite of all this, when Britney finally came forward to speak on the situation, she protected this guy. You could tell that she was still very much in love with him. I will always love him. He'll always have a special place in my heart. He is such a great person. And yet he's he's left the impression that, that you weren't faithful, that you betrayed the relationship. I think everyone has a side to their story. And um, to make them feel a certain way, make them feel, you know, I'm not technically saying he's wrong, but I'm not technically saying he's right either. Did you Britney Spears? <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? Oh, man. Come on, man. Okay, I did it. No. Yeah. Publicly, they'll claim to be virgins, but privately... God damn. But I have to say, I am not surprised. Having been in the club industry, I've seen a lot of fuckboys like this that go around sleeping with girls, bragging about it to anyone who will listen, and then once they get a girl pregnant, they bounce. Straight up, put in so loud. You're goddamn right. Now, the fallout, Britney resulted to abusing alcohol and substances to keep a smile on her face, lying to the world that everything was okay. Because of what Justin did, the damage was already done, and those cuts ran deep. The tabloids were full of accusations. She's a slut. She's on drugs. I never had a drinking problem. I liked to drink, but it was never out of control. Do you want to know my drug of choice? The only thing I really did except for drinking? Adderall, the amphetamine that's given to kids for ADHD. Adderall made me high, yes, but what I found far more appealing was that it gave me a few hours of feeling less depressed. It was the only thing that worked for me as an antidepressant and I really felt like I needed one of those. And this would be the beginning in the very slow decline of Britney Spears' career, her life, and her sanity. And we actually have an entire 30 minute episode talking about how that went down, link down below. So now you can begin to understand just how irresponsible of a person Justin Timberlake is. But what you're about to see next is that he would even take it to the next level and ruin another woman's career. 
So back in the 1990s, there was one man who was absolutely untouchable, the king of pop, Michael Jackson. But there was one person who came very close, his sister, Janet Jackson. Homegirl could sing and dance, and she's actually the one who started the trend of having choreographed dance moves in their music videos. Not only that, but she's the only person in music history to have number one hits in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And she's also the only person in history to win awards in rock, hip hop, R&B, rap, and dance all at the same time. Not even her brother has those bragging rights, yo. And Janet Jackson was also the first to incorporate social injustice and political issues into her music, inspiring Michael Jackson to follow suit. And just like Justin Timberlake, she was a child star, appearing in many different shows in the 1970s until eventually she got her film debut with hip hop legend Tupac. And this resulted in her being nominated for an Academy Award for Best Song. Wakarikong. From the 80s to the 90s to the 2000s, Janet Jackson was a force to be reckoned with, but pretty soon this would all come toppling down. So, like I mentioned before, Justin Timberlake shot off his music career by joining the band NSYNC. And NSYNC got their break because Janet Jackson decided to take the risk of having them debut on her tour. So many people credit the success of NSYNC to Janet Jackson. And of all the members of NSYNC, Justin Timberlake could be called a Janet Jackson Tia Foot. This is Justin. I just want to say I've been a big fan of the Janets for a long, long time. I watched Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation 1814 video like 100 gazillion times. Things were just starting out for NSYNC. Janet took us with her on the Velvet Rope tour and taught us what being professional is all about. Yeah, like how to be fine. The yeah, she's fine in the video too. Fine. So, in 2004, when MTV was invited to put on the Super Bowl halftime show, they invited some heavy hitters. Diddy, Kid Rock, and of course, Janet Jackson. Now, Janet Jackson, having just been on tour with NSYNC, decided that she would invite Justin Timberlake as a secret surprise guest. And this show was amazing, all the way up until the final nine seconds where everything went to shit. And this would kick off the largest media firestorm in American history, as well as inspiring the creation of one of the largest video sharing platforms in the world. And it would be aptly named Nipplegate. Now, to this day, there is a lot of debate over whether or not this was intentional or accidental. But when Justin Timberlake issued his public statement, there were two words that caught on to the media wardrobe malfunction. I am sorry if anyone was offended by the wardrobe malfunction. Wardrobe malfunction. Wardrobe malfunction. Wardrobe malfunction. Wardrobe malfunction. Wardrobe malfunction. So this wardrobe malfunction happened live on national TV where men, women, families, and children were all watching to their amazement as Justin Timberlake ripped off a piece of Janet Jackson's clothing revealing them titties or a titties. And people all over the globe were shocked, not just because of what happened, but because it was incredibly hard to find a copy of the video of what exactly happened. Because you have to remember, back then all we had was Yahoo and AOL, yo. So that meant you had to ask and beg and plead a friend or a friend of a friend whether or not they had a videotape and they were lucky enough to record this epic moment. And there were three guys who had absolutely no luck finding this video. And these three guys had had enough. They were going to solve the problem. So they decided to create a website that would allow people to upload their epic moments to the internet and share it with everyone one so that no one would ever miss a nipple gate ever again. And this is how YouTube was born. Real talk, if it weren't for Janet's right boob, there would be no YouTube. Now, after Justin Timberlake got off stage, he seemed very pleased and proud of his performance. You got nasty with Miss Jackson, that was pretty cool. Hey man, <laughs> it's every man's dream. That was fun. It was quick, slick, to the point, and uh, no, I enjoyed it. It was, it was a lot of You guys are getting pretty hot and steamy up there. Hey man. We love giving y'all something to talk about. <laughs> but the public didn't think so because they not only had just seen a titty, they had seen a black titty on national television. This was not what they signed up for. And this would kick off a media sh storm that went on for ages. Offensive, embarrassing to us and our fans. The Federal Communications Commission is investigating. The National Football League is livid. I'm inclined to believe they planned it. She's implying that Justin was in cahoots with her against MTV. This was wildly inappropriate. We have to say enough's enough to have sexualized the Super Bowl in the manner that they did it is is just unforgivable now initially justin played it off and he made light of the situation you kind of have to have a sense of humor about yeah. all of this because like like you said everybody takes this so seriously like, well, it's yeah. not that serious <laughs> the, the middle east is the situation that's serious. that's serious wow like we still haven't found the weapons of mass destruction and everybody cares about this this but as that pressure started to mount although the majority of it was on janet jackson a couple of congress people started to look his way well Where's Justin Timberlake? Justin Timberlake deserves more than just a slap on the hand. It takes two to tango, and I think only a sleazy man would allow uh, Janet Jackson to take the full blame. So as a result, Justin Timberlake had to come out again and make another public statement. But this time, he was singing a very different tune. He was crying himself a river. I don't want to be involved in this stunt. That's not my style. 
you know, I, I don't have any reason to do this. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated at the whole situation. I'm frustrated that my character is being questioned. I don't feel like I need publicity like this. And I wouldn't want to be involved with this stunt, especially something of this magnitude. I had a call from my manager to, uh, to do the Super Bowl, that, that they were interested in me doing the Super Bowl, and, and uh, initially turned it down. Uh, got a call from Janet uh, and decided to do it. There were a lot of people that were completely offended by what happened, including my own family. And um, I think that's probably the part that's frustrating the most for me. So this was Britney Spears all over again. When Britney told him he was about to be a father, he completely shirked any responsibility. When she was lying on the floor crying in pain, this fool pulled out a guitar and started singing to her. And then eventually he left her lying in the dirt. And this time was no different. When a woman had been embarrassed in front of the world and was now being publicly shamed and blamed and having her career ruined, Justin Timberlake would shift the blame on her. Because according to him, it was the woman's fault. And the result, almost every national media station turned their sights to Janet Jackson and they destroyed this woman. The exposure of Janet Jackson's breast Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson Super Bowl a show. The Janet Jackson incident. Breast Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. It looked like the average middle-aged woman's breast and may not have helped her image as a sex symbol. And she had this like star on her breast. Mm -hmm. It was like an ornament. It was like a Christmas ornament. Janet's career was practically done. And this forced her to come out and make a hostage video. I mean, an apology video. My decision to uh, change the Super Bowl performance was actually made after the final rehearsal. MTV, CBS, the NFL had no knowledge of this whatsoever. And unfortunately, the whole thing went wrong in the end. I am really sorry if I offended anyone that was truly not my intention. My God. Now, although Justin Timberlake never fully defended Janet Jackson, he did publicly admit one very important thing. It's an understatement to say that it was sort of unfair if you look, if you, if you consider it 50-50, I probably got 10% of mm -hmm. the blame. And I think that says something about society. You know, I think that America's harsher on women. But even this was not enough. Janet Jackson was marked with a scarlet letter in the entertainment industry. She was completely untouchable, and she was now a meme and a joke for many famous comedians. Janet lost her damn mind, whipping out a pity on a Sunday afternoon. And a 40 year old pity at that. You can't just whip out a 40 year old pity. And let me tell you, they didn't just say this behind her back, they said it to her face. Whenever she tried to go on talk shows and promote her album or her tour, they would completely shift the conversation. So it was just a mistake is what you're saying. He, uh, Justin Timberlake wasn't supposed to pull your, rip your blouse off. Wasn't, he wasn't supposed to do that. He was, he wasn't. Steve, you're gonna make me relive this. I, I, I wanna put all that behind me. No, well, not, do. well not me. It. This woman had one of the most embarrassing moments in her career turned into a humorous giant meme. She was done. Her tour was canceled. All radio stations refused to play any of her music, causing her new album to become a complete failure. And worst of all, that same year, she was disinvited from the Grammys. The same place where she had won just five Grammys a few years before would not even let her in the building. And as for Justin Timberlake, they not only let him in the building, they not only gave him one, but two Grammys. And one Grammy was for that song that he wrote that completely destroyed his ex-girlfriend, Cry Me a River. And when he got up on that stage, what he said was very interesting. I, I, this is overwhelming, I don't know what to say. Listen, I know it's been a rough week on everybody, and um, <laughs> what occurred was unintentional, completely regrettable, and I apologize if you guys are offended. Thank you, I'm, I don't know what to say. So now that he's on top of the world, he finally apologizes. But the one thing he didn't do was defend the very woman who gave him a platform in the first place. And after two years of hiding and making no public appearances, Janet Jackson would finally come forward and share her story. In another magazine that you regret making that apology, is that mm -hmm. true? Why? Uh, it was an accident. And management that I had at the time, they thought it was important that I did. Mm -hmm. I had said to them, well, what are you apologizing yeah, for? Why am I apologizing for an act? And, yeah. and they wanted me to say that, so, uh -huh. so I did. They thought it was best that I do, so I did. Do you think in any way that uh, Justin Timberlake left you hanging out there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm speaking to Miss Jackson. <laughs> Just, Justin, we were friends. Mm -hmm. I consider him a friend and I'm very loyal and friendship is very important to me. So Janet Jackson, just like Britney Spears, defended Justin Timberlake and she still considered him a friend, which is a far cry from what Justin Timberlake did for those two. So Janet Jackson, a woman who had won awards every year for an entire decade straight, could not even get her music played on the radio. And as for Justin Timberlake, well, he was relatively unscathed. In fact, in 2018, he was invited back by the NFL to perform at the Super Bowl halftime show again, this time solo. So while two women fall face down in the dirt, 
one man builds his success right on their backs. But as you know, every story has a plot twist. And as we said before, a man's greatest enemy is his ex-wife or his ex-girlfriend. And how Britney Spears served her revenge is a dish served ice cold. So after breaking up with Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake got in a three-year relationship with famous actress Cameron Diaz, and then after they broke up, in 2012, he finally tied the knot with another famous actress, Jessica Biel. While Jessica Biel was pregnant with his second child, my man was caught red-handed in public with another actress at a bar. Then you shot. Your wife is pregnant with your kid, one of the most vulnerable times in her life, and you're out flirting and messing around with other women in public? Now don't get it twisted, I know many famous couples they have arrangements with each other, but I would assume a large part of this agreement is discretion and not flaunting that shit in public, yo, especially where everybody can see. This straight up reminds me of everything that was said in Britney's book, straight up side on behavior. And of course, my man didn't admit to anything. A few weeks ago, I displayed a strong lapse in judgment, but let me be clear, nothing happened between me and my co-star. I drank way too much that night and I regret my behavior, I should have known better. So after this and one other cheating incident, the public very quickly started to scrutinize Justin Timberlake, as this guy's actions were very different from his squeaky clean pretty boy image. They were now beginning to ask questions. How come he didn't defend Janet Jackson during Nipplegate? How come he threw Britney Spears under the bus and publicly went out and shamed and ridiculed her? And then, as his career and popularity started to decline, he went crawling back to NSYNC and released another single back in 2023. Just let me take you to a better place. I'm gonna make it. Now, this is supposed to be his first single in three years, announcing, hey guys, I'm back. But pretty much nobody cared. But then, just one month later, Britney Spears released her tell all book, The Woman and Me, revealing everything we just went through in the previous chapters. And the internet was pissed. It was now up for Justin Timberlake. The world not only knew how horrible he treated Britney Spears, but also that he was a serial cheater. And after a lot of pressure and catching a lot of shit from all sides online, Justin Timberlake decided to release an apology. And then, in February of this year, Justin Timberlake released a new album, and he caught from everybody online. The YouTube comments in his music videos are hilarious. I rebuke this demon in the name of Jesus. People are in total darkness. Blessed are you if you are able to spot the devil's tricks. The closer it gets to Jesus coming back, the worse the music gets. And then just last month, my man caught a DUI charge, and Britney Spears reveled in this shit. And as a result, this sent one of Britney Spears' old songs to the top of the charts. So now Justin Timberlake is at a career low, and he is finally getting his payback. So let this be a lesson to those of you out there. Be nice to your ex-girlfriends and your ex-wives. And if you're gonna break up with them, please don't do it over life or a text message. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. So is Justin Timberlake a side nine or did he just do what every man who had the opportunity would do? Let me know what you think down below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, keep it simple, yo. And I will see you on the flip side. Peace.